I, re I was thinking that song today, I'm thinking back when I was a kid growing up in the South Okanagan in winters, they were fairly cold. We had lots of snow most winters. But it was sort of neat because it added a sort of a, a flavor to, to our Christmas celebration. You know, we had to go, in the, back then you could go up in the mountain and hack down a tree and bring it home and nail it to the floor and then decorate it. That was, that was a, 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 an experience that most of us probably had. And so there's a bit of a nostalgia there. But for some, the past Christmases carry not only memories, but bad memories. Families gathering, tension, uh, losses, struggles, grief. Sometimes we had cozy dinners together, our church, our, our family. Other times they could have, they could be tense because we had an uncle that you know he was a little cranky and he didn't get along with our with the other uncle, so they sort of always uh, either didn't come to the party or or when they did they would sit in opposite room of the room, so it was always uh, you know it was a sad time in some ways. Now, how many have ever heard uh, there was an organization back in the 1990s called Blue Christmas? Uh, some of us remember it. 1990, it began in the U.S. as an endeavor by ministers and clergy and uh, churches to help people who struggle through Christmas time where they've had losses, where they've had hurts, where they had anxiety, where they struggle with grief. And it, it became a movement. And, and even today, we still talk about Blue Christmas. Uh, Jim reminded me of Elvis Presley. I'm dreaming or his song, Blue Christmas. I don't know if that was born out of that or not, but uh, he identified with the earlier. sadness of, uh, of hurt feelings and uh, family quarrels and squabbles. It was before. And the song was earlier, and then the organization came. Right, right. Came and the organization that. came. But he perhaps predated you know, the 1991, where he probably struggled with uh, being blue. Um, but I want to remind you tonight whether you are enjoying Christmas past, you have love, fond memories, or maybe you're here tonight and you have some painful memories of Christmas. I want to remind you tonight that Advent is here. Advent has arrived. You may have had a bleak outlook over your experiences, but I want you to know that Advent is here. And tonight, hope is here. We can be restored, we can be rehealed by all of the past pains and hurts. It's important because it delivers us, both from our nostalgia and our cynicism. You see, Advent is not about nostalgia. It seems like, and I know, we look back, we see Jesus, we remember his first coming as the babe. We sing the beautiful old Advent song, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. O come, O King of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid all our sad divisions cease, and be yourself our King of peace. You see, it's not about the baby Jesus anymore that we're waiting for. We are waiting for the Son of Man to come again. Amen. He came once as a babe, he's coming again, and that's our hope, we're looking forward to it. You know, we are Jewish and Gentile believers here in Renaissance, in the year 2024, waiting and hoping for the final redemption of the world. Aren't you? I am, I believe that it's coming, and the world is going to be redeemed, is going to be saved, and the Messiah is going to come, and he's going to establish his kingdom. Number two, Advent isn't about the past. You know what? I've discovered more and more this last week when I've been reading about uh, Advent that Advent is about the future. It is about hope. Hope that shines through the darkness of this present age. It comes with light. It comes with truth. And it comes with hope that darkness is being penetrated by the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his message. So here we are, almost the end of the year, 29 more days to go. We're preparing and hoping for a decent end of the year. 
but it doesn't seem like it's working that way, does it? And we're wondering about 2025. I don't know if this is an aside, but I, you've probably heard the news today about what has happened in Syria. The government is being toppled. And uh, Islamist uh, rebels, or whatever you want to call them, they're Islamic uh, jihadists that is funded by Tur uh, from Turkey, have taken over the city of Aleppo, which is the second largest city in Turkey. Uh, they don't know where uh, the, the dictator is, uh, Bashir al-Assad, but it's just spiraling out of control there. We need hope. Now, Jesus talked about the future. Do you know that? In Luke chapter 21, he said this, and there will be strange events in the skies, signs in the sun, moon, and stars, down here on earth, listen, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. The courage of many people will falter because of the fearful fate they see coming upon the earth. Did you catch the words of Jesus? Turmoil, perplexed, falter, fearful. And I don't think you have to be a super spiritual person to grasp Jesus' tone here. And so we can't just skip over Luke 21 on our way to Christmas. This is Advent language. It's hard-hitting reminder that our world is as shaky now as when it was when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. But is this all of the message for the first Sunday of Advent? It's sort of depressing when you look, when you read the newspaper, well, if you ever read the newspaper anymore, most people get all their news from the internet. That things are bad out there, aren't they? Now that's part of it, but certainly not all of it. Tonight, the message of Advent is a message of hope. And Jesus in Luke chapter 21, verse 28 says, Now when these things begin to take place, I like this translation, Stand straight and look up, because your redemption is drawing near. The message of Advent is not just that everything is falling apart. We probably don't need Jesus to tell us that. We just we see it happening in our own in our eyes, don't we? We see it everywhere. The message of Advent is that when the earth is in an upheaval and when all hell seems to be breaking loose, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing near. Those are, those are amazing words, relevant words. They're up to date. They're, they were said 2,000 years ago. It's more real now than ever. When troubles begin, another translation said this, don't be afraid, look up, raise your head high, because the truth is that your liberation, your salvation, your redemption is fast approaching. Amen. How many know that it's a, few, it's a cute little statement that history is his story. You've heard that probably. History is his story. Now some people that's, think it's a rather simplistic way of understanding human history. But the more you think about it as Christians, I've come to the conclusion that this truth is truth. Ultimately, human history, the history of the universe, is God's story. God is at work. God ultimately be created the world, and history is his story. And so in the middle of a seemingly hopeless world right now, we know who's writing the final chapter. We know who's coming to bring his kingdom of peace and joy. So here at the beginning of Advent, we don't just look back, we don't just look back in the midst of the past, in the distant past of the coming of Jesus, we tonight can look forward to the future of the coming king. That is our hope tonight. God who created this world in the beginning is also bringing it to its triumphant end and conclusion. God is working toward his goal. Whether you think so or not, whether you, you, you question what's happening in our world, you don't understand what's going on, God has a plan, he has a goal, as he's on the move, He's constantly active, constantly pressing forward to the time 
when his kingdom will come in all of its fullness and his rule will be acknowledged by every creation, every part of creation. So unequivocally we can say our redemption is drawing near. I think of the words of Isaiah. It's a, it's a very famous passage of scripture for Christmas. Isaiah chapter 9, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. It's going to be a peaceful government. It's going to be a government that will rule with fairness and justice and equity for all. It's going to be upon his shoulders and he is going to rule for reign and for a thousand years. That's part of our hope tonight, isn't it? Amen. The world is spiraling out of control, but it's going to come to a decisive point where Jesus returns to establish a kingdom of righteousness and holiness and goodness. So what do we do? Well, one thing, let's not spend our time in fear. Let's not spend our time wondering and worrying and confusion and doubt and panicking. 2025, God wants us to stand faithfully working and worshiping. We can't hunker down here and become a, a, a little sect in Vancouver worried about what's happening and waiting for the coming of Jesus. We need to be active in our pursuit of God's love for the world. Loving and serving, giving and building, and calling people to faith, calling people to Christ, calling people to hope in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. That's our agenda. That's our goal. In 2025, the Lord willing, if he doesn't come in 2025, we need to keep busy. We need to keep active. We need to be full of hope and courage and a wonderful spirit of love and kindness toward our world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to reaffirm our trust that God is faithful to his promises. He said he would return and he will. And that's our hope. Christ is coming again. And so Advent today calls us to look up. Lift up your heads. Come on. Most of us are down like this. You know what? Let's start walking around with our heads up. I think if Jesus were here, he'd say, lift up your heads. Your redemption is coming. Your salvation is going to find its fulfillment. It's drawing near. Psalm 31. Be strong and let your heart show strength all who hope in the Lord. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's live in hope tonight. Let's live in the confidence that God loves us, He has a plan for us, and He's working it out, that we can trust Him fully and completely as we end this year and as we go into a new year. I'm excited about it. I see all the stuff that's going on in our world, and I think, oh wow, this is overwhelming. And I'm, sometimes I find myself glued to the TV watching news reports. But ultimately, I have hope that Jesus is coming again. All of these things that go on, tell me he's coming soon. And we need to be ready, but we need to be working as well. Carrying on the work of the Renaissance Church in 2025, Lord willing, with his blessing upon us, with his blessing and anointing upon us, so that we can bring hope to our community. We can bring hope to those who have no hope tonight. There's a hopeless generation out there. Who else to tell them about? Hey, I found hope. I found newness of life. I found something that I want to share with you. I want you to come along with me. And that's our motivation, isn't it? That's our hope tonight. Let's pray tonight that God will inspire us with hope to carry on what he's called us to do. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for these moments. We thank you for hope that inspires us to continue our walk and our labor and our work of love. So be with us, Lord, as we continue on throughout this week, throughout this end of this year, and into a new year. Lord, we lift up our voices and we sing hallelujah. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I want you to stand. We're going to sing this beautiful song, a song of hope and inspiration. Lift up your voices.
sorry.